Would you like to watch a movie? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Would you consider the cinema of the Caribbean? Agent confirmed. Morning, Mr. Hunt. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to face your fate. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. I love making these movies. After all these years, you know, we now have our fifth mission possible. The committee has shut us down. There is no more IMF. I've been ordered to bring everyone in. No matter which Mission Impossible film you're watching, you're in for the ride of your life. It's not just action, it's not just suspense. You have a lot of intrigue. The fundamental idea is that it's a, a crazy adventure with some familiar and some new characters. The Mission Impossible films have resonated so strongly for so long because they represent a, a very specific sort of wish fulfillment. They somehow managed to make the things that we don't think possible, possible. Hey! Having a successful franchise uh, of films has its blessings and its challenges, and one is that each director wants to do his own version of that, you know, have his own fingerprints on that. But every situation will be solved gracefully with cool music, with gadgets, with brilliant actors. It's just exciting. It's a ride. What makes Mission Impossible special is, of course, it's an action film. Of course, it's got s scope and spectacle. But Mission, unlike any other movie, has as its own a, an expectation of misdirect both plot and character. One of the things that Tom decided early on was he wanted different directors to be doing each one. He wanted them to have their own kind of life. So while there is a kind of continuum of spy genre, which is a, a successful and sort of robust, long-lasting genre, the, the Mission Impossible series, each one has sort of had its own kind of focus. What I realized when I sat down to actually work on the franchise, when I analyzed all the movies put together, in each and every instance, Ethan Hunt is able to do superhuman things, but he is not superhuman. Uh, he's always aided by technology. In Ghost Protocol, he's able to climb on the side of a building. He's able to become invisible. But in each and every one of those things, there's a very uh, specific technological advantage that allows him to do it, that makes it feel like it's almost real and that anyone could do it. We're constantly pushing the bar uh, with storytelling, with the characters, and, and definitely with the sequences. Tom brings a real sense of, of humor to the role. You actually said that out loud. Mission accomplished! There's little moments for those super mission fans. Ethan, we gotta go. Now an emerging terror organization known as the Syndicate. We are the Syndicate, Mr. Hunt. One of my favorite ones, which real Mission Impossible uh, fans of the series will get, is when Ethan phones Brandt at the beginning of the film. You see a switchboard operator and you hear Ethan say... Western Europe on security. And he goes, designator, and Ethan goes... Bravo, Echo, 1-1. One, one. And then Ethan gets through to Brandt and he says, Go secure. If you watch the first Mission Impossible film, when Ethan's uh, team are killed and he gets on the phone, he says, Central Europe unsecured. And the guy on the end says, Designator. Bravo, Echo, 1-1. One, one. And then the guy picks up the phone and he goes, Go secure. Okay, go ahead. But you're seeing the other side of the conversation in this film. And Chris has put a lot of thought into all those little details so that fans know we care about the other movies and we're, we are um, passionate about giving the people who know just little Easter eggs to discover along the way. Statcom 7. Central Europe unsecured. Designator. Bravo, Echo, 1-1. One, one. Connecting. This is Brent. Go secure. Okay, go ahead. This is Ethan Hunt. Request immediate extraction. What happened? You know, when we do these films, there's no actual template that we have to follow. I mean, the fun of making these movies with Tom is that he goes to the directors and he says, 
You can do anything you want. Let's just try and have a heist in the movie. We're constantly trying to push ourselves and do some things that were different. And in this case, we started talking about the underwater sequence. It really does feel like what I know Chris McQuarrie wanted to do, which is sort of have it be a little bit of a greatest hits version of, of Mission Impossible. There will always be bad guys out there. 20 years later and we're still out there saving the world. That has to be evidence that this story has still got a lot to give. What I hope to do with the movies, and I think even from the beginning, since I was a kid, 18, I remember thinking I just, I hope to have a film and to make movies so that they could be watched, you know, not just opening weekend, but something that can be looked at five years, 10 years, and still, an audience, I, you know, if I've done my job right, it still communicates to them and they're still entertained by it.